clicking recording now. Hey everybody, my name is Harry Drake. I'm an admission counselor here at Austin College uh, and I'm very excited to be telling you more about Austin College and the different opportunities that we've got here for our students. Uh, I wanted to give you a quick 10, 15 minute presentation, just kind of going over some basics about Austin College and some things that make us really kind of stand out from the crowd. Uh, if you've got any questions after today, please let me know. Uh, I will give my email to uh, Ms. Post so that way she can share it to you guys in case you need anything or want to reach out. So just some quick background about Austin College. We were founded in 1849 in Huntsville, Texas, but we moved up to Sherman in 1879 and we've been in Sherman ever since. We have an entire campus-wide population of around 1,300 total students and only 20 of them are going to be graduate students. So we are very predominantly undergrad. That means that all of our resources are gonna be allocated right to you, even starting as early as your first semester of your freshman year. So things like research, internships, mentorship, study abroad opportunities, all of it is going to be allocated right to you early in the beginning. You do not have to wait in line behind anybody, which is really, really cool. So we are a private four-year liberal arts and sciences institution. And for us, what the liberal arts means is that you'll be taking a number of different courses in a variety of disciplines. So that's going to be pretty typical for a lot of other liberal arts schools. But here you're given the freedom to choose what you're taking in those specific disciplines. So uh, our curriculum is set up so that way you will take four humanities, two social sciences, two sciences, one quantitative reasoning or math credit, and then three semesters of a January term, which is a mini semester in the month of January. So within these courses, there's a lot of flexibility. You get to choose what you want to take. So if you are really not looking forward to taking maybe another course or another English course, you can skip those. So you don't have to take, you know, a specific science. You can take ones that are better suited to your strengths. You can also take different types of humanities other than just English and history. So this lets you customize your experience and customize and cultivate the skills that you're wanting to kind of take into your career, but it also lets you play to your strengths. You're able to find things that you're going to do better at and really figure out what's going to be the right path for you. This also opens up a lot of doors in terms of what you can study. So if you're still not 100% sure what you want, might want to minor in or even major in, these courses are going to give you the flexibility and the bandwidth to be able to sample from everywhere. So you can see, you know, okay, maybe this doesn't work out, but I can try this instead. We've got over 50 areas of study, kind of all your classics like biology, pre-health, business psychology. We've also got uh, more interesting programs, programs that are a little more unique. We've got gender studies, we've got Western intellectual tradition and philosophy, politics and economics. So we've got all your classics. And if you're wanting to major and minor in something that are in different disciplines, you are certainly able to do that. So you're not just gonna be restricted to one specific area of study. If you come into Austin College and you're not sure what you're wanting to study, no worries. You do not declare a major until the second semester of your sophomore year, so right before your junior year. Uh, and in between that, you've got a lot of time to test out a bunch of different things. You can start taking courses in what you think you might want to major in and then figure out if that's not right for you, you can turn around and try something else. You will also have a faculty mentor starting the very first day of your freshman year. And this mentor is just going to be somebody that's going to guide you throughout like the Austin College process. They're going to help you declare your major, figure out what you want to study, what you want to do after you graduate. They're just going to be someone in your corner to help you kind of navigate the next four years of your life. We also have the option for you to design your own major. So if you've kind of gotten to look at everything and you're wanting something really specific like graphic design or forensic psychology, and we don't offer a major in it, you are able to design that yourself. So you would work with your mentor, our vice president of academic affairs and different department heads to build out this program of study and make it what you want it to be. So my very good friend, Catherine, she built out a major in social work several years ago, and it pulled in education, psychology, uh, and then either nonprofit leadership or something else. I can't remember what the other one was. So she was able to build in and build this social work bachelor's uh, and bring into it all the skills and all the courses that she thought would be best for her as a social worker. So that's definitely an option if you're looking for that. Uh, one of our more popular options for majors that we have set out is definitely going to be our health sciences. So we are very well known for our health sciences programs, our business programs, and our education programs as well. But the top notch one is pre-health. So we have a pre-health pre-professional program. Students in that program get an additional pre-health mentor. So they have their general faculty mentor and a second mentor that is specific to the pre-health program. 
This mentor is going to help you keep track of all the prerequisite courses you need to take in order to go on to medical school. But they're also going to help you find internships and job opportunities in the area while you are an undergrad. So if you're looking for the chance to shadow an OBGYN or maybe go intern at a dermatology office, they will help you find those opportunities, get in touch with them so that way you can begin learning and being involved that early. You can start that as early as probably the second semester of your freshman year. So you're really diving in and getting to see if this area is going to be right for you. And then if it's not right for you, your mentor can help you find something else that will work just as well. We also have access to research that our pre-health students are encouraged to do. It is not a requirement, but all of our students have the opportunity to do research and about two thirds will actually do research while they're here. So it's definitely something we encourage our pre-health students to do. And we have gateways and pathways with colleges, universities, medical schools all across the country to help facilitate students going into that next step program. So our pre-health program is all encompassing. We've got pre-vet, pre-dental, pre-med, but we've also got pre-physical therapy and kind of anything that you might want to throw in there and be involved in later on down the road. So for our students that do end up going into what I call their next step program, so medical school, dental school, chiropractic school, we have a 90% acceptance rate for students into their next step program. If we're looking specifically at medical school, that is a 63% uh, percent acceptance rate in their first application. And the average for the state of Texas is going to be around 25. So we've got a much higher average in the state of Texas, which makes me very proud. Like I said earlier, we've also got a number of different pre-professional programs as well, just besides pre-health. We've got pre-law, pre-theology, and pre-engineering. So if you're wanting to go down any of those routes, become a lawyer, an engineer, a minister, we've got these programs set up so that you can take part in them as well. Each of these students are also going to have their own faculty mentor in their specific area, and they're going to have similar opportunities to do research, internships, shadowing, anything like that. Our second best known program is definitely, however, our education program, and that is going to be our one master's program on campus. So students in our education program, they will start out with their bachelor's, they will get a math, they will get their bachelor's with a minor in education and a major in whatever they would like to study. And then once they graduate and finish their bachelor's, they get their teacher certification and they graduate with over 90 student teaching hours. If students are wanting to, however, they're able to stay an extra semester or an extra year and get a master's of arts in education. So students can stay um, at Austin College for a total of either four and a half or five years and get their bachelor's, their master's, their certification to teach, uh, and they can also get a job in the area as they are taking their master's as well, all in less than five years, usually four and a half years. So this is a really cool and interesting opportunity for students who want to become a teacher. I was in the education program myself, so I'm very passionate about it. And if you've got any questions about it specifically, I always love to kind of get to chat over it. So one of the big things that we also work into our curriculum at Austin College is going to be our hands-on or applied learning experiences for our students. We think that this is a big way that you're going to be able to learn, see if this area is going to be right for you, retain information and showcase that you do know what you're doing when it comes to graduate school applications or job applications after you graduate. So we have a guarantee that 100% of our students will do some kind of on-campus hands-on learning opportunity while they are here. So you'll do at least one before you graduate. You can find the one that you like the best. You're not gonna be assigned a specific one. So you're really, again, able to customize your education, build it out and make sure it's gonna be best for you and your career. So I'm gonna go through each of these on the screen. Of course, the number one one is going to be an internship. Uh, our students have access to our career services office and they are going to help you access tons of databases with like millions and millions of internships and jobs. So you're able to step into this career field and see if it's gonna be right for you and also get real hands-on experience that will come in handy later. So in my freshman year, I really thought I wanted to be a museum curator, thought I wanted to work uh, in the history field, work with history in some kind of way. So I did get an internship at a museum summer after my freshman year, and I figured out very quickly that it was not gonna be right for me. <laughs> I did not like it, didn't really jive with it, which is totally fine. I was able to turn tail really quick and find something else, something new that I liked. We have internships for all of our different majors and minors. And if you're wanting to see if this career pathway is going to be right for you, our career services office will 100% help you find one. We've also got integrated learning projects. And these are gonna be like extended lab projects where you're learning something in the classroom, but you're also taking time and initiative to actually practice it and enact it also in the classroom. So the best example for this is going to be our Williams Investment Fund. This is a big, big for seniors in the business program. So this is where they are given a million dollars of the 
of an investment fund. So it's a million dollars from the college from a very, very generous donor. Uh, and these students take that $1 million and with the help of a faculty member, they invest it into the stock market. So the students themselves are in charge of that $1 million. They watch it rise, watch it fall. They learn how to tell what a good stock is gonna be. They even learn how to list stocks as well uh, and kind of what that process looks like. But the whole time, the whole semester, they are managing this money. Many of them do want to go into money management afterwards, so this is a great kind of hands-on learning tool for them. At the end of the semester, whatever money they get back over that $1 million is given into student scholarships. So at the end of the semester, they have $2 million. They take that $1 million to replenish, of course, so the next year can do it, but they also take that other million and they invest it into student scholarships. So they're investing money into the stock market, watching how it rises, how it falls, but they're also getting to help the Austin College community. If you're looking for a specific integrated learning project for your major or minor, there's probably an option. Uh, that one is just going to be the best known. I was a theater major and I got to do an integrated learning project as well. I actually directed a full length production in my senior year. Um, but again, there's going to be a number of different ones for each major and each minor. Like I said earlier, two thirds of our students do research while they're here. It is largely student designed and student centered. So you're able to step in and say, I wanna study this. I wanna study corn. I wanna study Mother Mary as a feminist uh, icon in Catholic literature. I want to study um, this different, these different psychological effects, facts. Uh, I wanna study all of these different things. Let me find the one I like the best and tunnel, tunnel that in. So you're focusing on the thing that you love the most about your area of study or just covering some niche thing that you figured, you know, I might not have another chance to really get to learn about this later. I wanna learn about it now. Like I said, two thirds of our students do research. Many of them will present at our spring scholarship conference. It is undergraduate research and it is only Austin College students presenting. So you're able to come in, show people what you've been doing, but also come see what your friends have been doing all semester and all year as well. Our students also travel all across the country to different research conferences. So if you're wanting to go to a specific one and learn more about an area of study, or if you're wanting to take your research to the national level and present there, we can help you get there. We also have a lot of study abroad opportunities for our students. About 80% of our students do study abroad while they're here. It's not a requirement, but it's something that we wanna make sure if you want to do it, you get to do it. So we've sent students to over 100 countries on every continent except for Antarctica, and we've got three separate ways that our students can study abroad. The typical one is going to be a semester or a year abroad. You can take courses in either your major or in like a specific area of study uh, or in your kind of general credits. We've also got a two month long service opportunity in the summer. Uh, you design this service opportunity, you figure out what you're gonna be doing, where you'll be going, you pitch it to a committee, and if it is accepted by the committee, they will pay for everything. So you go, you do some community service, uh, get more hands-on learning experience with your specific field, maybe grant writing, or you wanna go be work in public health. Uh, and then also it is covered by a committee, which is great. And then we've got a, three to five week learning opportunity for our study abroad students in our January term. This is a mini semester in January where you're taking one course and many students will study abroad and take that one course abroad. And it'll study a niche part of a specific culture. If you've got any questions about study abroad, please let me know. There's lots to cover uh, and I don't want to bog this down too, too much with study abroad, but there's so much to talk about for each one of those different ways you can study abroad. And then we've also got community-based learning experiences. So this is going to be where you're going out into the community and you are kind of meeting some need in the community. So the big one is going to be SEPA. This is our grant writing program where students write grants for a nonprofit all summer. This is a nonprofit that works in the field that you're wanting to go into or at least have some kind of an interest in. So you're able to work directly with nonprofits in what you're wanting to do. I wrote nonprofits for a local theater organization all summer, specifically with their children's theater organization. But I had other friends who wrote grants for a public library or a symphony orchestra. Some people even worked with a local homeless shelter. So there's lots of wonderful opportunities there. If you see a need in the community and you want to meet it and you have an idea of how it can be met, our campus will also help you create a new community-based learning experience. So those are the main hands-on applied learning opportunities here in Austin College. Like I said, you'll do at least one before you graduate. You might end up doing multiple. Some people like me accidentally end up doing all five. Many of them you'll kind of fall into and not even realize you've done until a little later. So you're not only going to college to learn, we recognize you're also coming to college to look at student life. 
So you want to learn, you want to be in a good place, but you also want to be in a welcoming community, a very vibrant community. And we've certainly got that here at Austin College. There's a number of different ways that we do that and a number of different ways that we help our students kind of navigate college, figure it out and figure out student life. One of the big ways that we help students kind of acclimate and find themselves as a route on campus is going to be having most of our students live on campus. So 80% of our students live on campus all four years. We've got four residence halls. That is typically where the freshmen will live. Upperclassmen apartments for sophomores and juniors. And then we've got on-campus senior housing, of course, for our seniors. In your senior year, if you're wanting to live off campus, you are more than welcome to. But everybody on campus is going to be really close to each other. So even if you're living in different residence halls or in a residence hall and an apartment building, everything is going to be a less than five, maybe even 10 minute walk from each other. So if you've got friends from older or older friends from classes that you want to study with or just people that you met in the CAF the other day that you think would be really cool and you'd like to hang out with them, super easy to meet up halfway on campus, go over to their flat or their apartment, maybe watch some Jeopardy or binge watch something on Netflix. So you're able to really get to know people outside of your specific class and even outside of that specific circle you make in the first couple of weeks of your freshman year. We've also got 70 plus student clubs and organizations for you to be involved in while you're here. So this is going to be a number of different things that you can be doing. Uh, so there's going to be academic organizations where you are learning specifically about your area of study outside of the classroom, kind of taking that learning, that interest that you have and looking at it in a real world setting. So one of the big ones is going to be actually called BIG, our biology interest group or our pre-health interest group. So these students are looking at current research articles that are going on, current events in the news. I imagine back when we all first started hearing about COVID-19, that was all they were talking about for a while. Uh, but there's also going to be ones for our theater program, for our program. Each of our modern languages all have a different club. So we've got German club, Japanese club, French club, Spanish club. So really, if you're wanting to take what you're learning in the classroom and expand it out into the real world, we've got these academic opportunities for you. We've also got interest-based groups where if you're doing a specific hobby and you want to continue doing it as well and kind of make friends while you're doing that, you're able to. So the more popular ones are going to be our esports team, uh, Ecos, our camping team. The anglers are, are our fishing team. Um, we've got art groups. So really anything that you're wanting to do, any hobby you might have somewhere it is on campus. We've also got Greek life in case you're wanting to be involved in that. 20 to 30% of our students do Greek life while they're here. So it's not a requirement to have friends or fit in on campus, but it's a great way to continue to make friends and have kind of a go-to community to be there for you if you need it. We've also got the option for you to design any club that you want. So if you, there's something that you do, something that you think is really fun and enriching, and you wanna share it with everybody and make it kind of open to the entire Austin College community, you can start your own club. All you need is yourself, about two or three other friends, a faculty sponsor, and then you would take all that to the Student Life Office and they would make you a chartered organization. Our Student Life Office loves having more clubs. They're like, please, the more the merrier. So if you're wanting to see something on campus and wanting to start something on campus, they will certainly help you with that process. We've also got 18 NCAA Division III athletic teams. So we have all your classics. We've got football, men's and women's basketball, uh, volleyball, baseball, softball, cross country, we've got swimming and diving, men's and women's tennis. We've also got men's and women's water polo and men's and women's soccer. I think I'm missing one or two. We've got a lot of different uh, academic teams or athletic teams that you can be a part of while you're a student athlete here. All the games are gonna be free to go to. So you can you know, come to a game and support your friends or if you're not a student athlete, but you still wanna go and cheer on the ruse, you certainly can. So with that, I'm going to move a little bit more into the application checklist. If you've got any specific questions about student life, or if you're wanting to hear more about or get in touch with somebody from a certain uh, athletic team, please let me know. I'm happy to kind of help facilitate that. So our application checklist, uh, our application opened up on August the 1st, and it will stay open until around March 1st. So it's going to be open for quite a while. Our first deadline we have coming up is our decision ready deadline. This is going to be November the 1st. What this is, is if students have submitted the application and all the required materials, and if they have visited campus by November 1st, uh, they will receive a decision before November 15th. Yeah, November 15th, so very, very early. Uh, so this is going to be our first deadline. After that, of course, we have the typical early action on December 1st. Then we've got one uh, in January, one in February, uh, and those are going to be kind of the big 
deadlines that you should meet. We do a process called rolling admission, which means that when we get your application uh, and it is fully complete, we will read it right then. We will not wait if you are in between two application deadlines. We'll not wait for the next deadline and you'll re receive a decision within two, maybe three weeks. So you're not gonna have to wait, like if you submit November 2nd, you're not gonna have to wait until middle of December to hear back. If you submit November 2nd, you'll likely hear back within two or three weeks of that time. And that continues all throughout the year as well. So with that, the application checklist is right here. We require the application, of course. It is free to submit the application. You do not have to pay to apply. We've got um, the Common App, the Apply Texas app, and the Coalition app. We show no preference. You find the one that you like the best and go from there. We also require a personal essay. Uh, this can be any of the topics that are listed in the application. There's going to be three, maybe five. You like the one that you, or you write the one that you like the best. Uh, we show no preference again. One of them is going to be kind of design your own essay. So if you're wanting to design your own essay, or if you think you've got a topic that might better fit you and suit your needs and your strengths, certainly do that. We also do require a high school transcript. If you do dual credit, you can send us the uh, college transcript, um, but it is not required for that. But we do require at least the high school transcript and two letters of recommendation, one from a teacher, one from a counselor. Uh, so we do require at least the two. If you're wanting to send in multiple, you certainly can. The committee is not going to turn away any extra information you might want to send. Uh, the committee loves, we always, they always say like more information rather than less information. So if you've got five teachers that want to write you a letter of recommendation, they can all five write you a letter of recommendation. The committee will read every single one. We also are test optional. So we've been test optional for a couple of years now. We were test optional before COVID, so we've kind of got a handle on it. So if you did take the SAT and the ACT test and you were happy with your scores and you want to send them in, we will take those and we will use them when we read your application. We do super score for those as well. So if you've taken the same test multiple times, we'll take the highest from each category, add that together to get what we call your true score. But if you were unable to take the test or if you just are not super satisfied with your score, uh, I understand standardized tests is not always gonna be the best way to kind of me measure your knowledge. Totally fine, we have this test optional path with this, you would submit a graded expository essay from your junior or senior year with the grades and teacher comments still on it. So if this is a path that you're wanting to do or one you're wanting to kind of take part in, you would just select so on the application. Being test optional does not hurt you in the review process, nor does it hurt you down the line with scholarships or any kind of financial aid as well. We do a process called holistic review for the application, which means we look at every part of the application individually and you're not going to be discounted just because of this one thing or because you don't meet a certain number. We have no GPA minimum and no SAT ACT score minimum either. So with that, I want to move into scholarships and financial aid. So like I said, with the test optional path, you are not going to be deemed for scholarships or financial aid if you uh, apply test optional. Our test optional students are still uh, like able to apply and receive the full range of our merit-based scholarships. So those go up to $29,000 a year. Students uh, are automatically reviewed for a merit-based scholarship when they submit their application. So all students are reviewed for those when they submit. There's no extra paperwork, nothing else they have to submit. Uh, and they are renewable for up to four years. So you get it every year uh, and you have to meet a certain GPA and disciplinary requirement, but you can do it, no problem, absolutely no problem. <laughs> we also have additional scholarships as well for our students, um, but the merit-based scholarship is going to be the big one. It is going to be decided uh, based on either GPA and test score or GPA and the test optional essay that you send in. The other scholarships are going to be our fine arts scholarships. These are for theater, music, and art students, and they go up to $4,000 a year. You do not have to major in any of the fine arts to get this scholarship. You just have to meet a minimum participation requirement. I know for theater specifically, you have to be involved in a show a semester. Art, you have to take one art course every year that you're here. Uh, and then choir, you have to be involved in the acapella choir uh, or one of the ensembles if you are um, an instrumental musician. So that's very manageable. Uh, and then we've got our engineering and physics scholarship as well. So if you know that engineering, either being on the pre-engineering track or studying engineering physics is gonna be right for you, then this scholarship is a wonderful opportunity that I would encourage you to apply for. This scholarship goes up to $7,000 a year. I think it is between five to 7,000 a year. And you get a $4,000 research stipend as well to do research later on. So if you're wanting to study physics or engineering, this is gonna be a great scholarship. 
And then we've got scholarships for students who are recommended by alums as well. So if you know someone who graduated from Austin College, they can write you a letter of recommendation. You can send it to us and that can get you up to $1,000 off of your tuition a year just by knowing somebody. So ask around, see if you know anybody. As it usually happens to people, they'll have a neighbor they've known for like their whole life that went to Austin College, but they didn't know that until they were getting the paper one day and said they visited Austin College the other day. So keep your ears open, keep that in mind. We've also got scholarships for our Presbyterian students as well. So if you are a member of the Presbyterian Church of the United States of America, we have a scholarship ready for you. We have a couple as well. So if you're wanting to learn more about the Presbyterian scholarships, please let me know. We do also accept the Federal Application for Student Aid or the FAFSA. That opened on October the 1st and we love for students to send it in. It is not a requirement. I encourage everyone to send it in anyway. You never know what you could qualify for. And these are just different grants and scholarships that you can get from Austin College based on kind of your income and the taxes and everything. I personally qualified for a lot more than I thought I would on the FAFSA. Uh, my parents filled it out, but they said, we're not gonna get anything, but I was able to get uh, a lot of help from Austin College as well when it came to financial aid. So you'll see at the top that 75% of our students receive merit-based aid, um, but 100% receive some kind of gift-based aid. So that's going to be either one of the departmental scholarships I mentioned, something from the FAFSA, or even one of the merit-based scholarships. So we do try to offer our students as much financial assistance as we can. We do not want money to be the main reason that students do not come here. So we want to help with that as much as we can. Uh, and you'll see that our average financial aid package is going to be around $31,500 a year. So that is what our average student receives in financial aid. Uh, our entire cost of attendance, so tuition and fees, room and board, uh, what my coworkers call the sticker price, is going to be around $55,000 a year. So that is quite a bit of money. I know, <laughs> we know, trust us. Um, so we want that first initial financial aid package to take as much off the front end as we can. So we'll take that down from the 55,000 to around 23,000 with just that average financial aid package. That still does leave a gap. And if that is too much for your family, you guys can't manage it. You know, my office will reach out. I will reach out throughout the year. And if that is something that you guys are uncomfortable with, you can contact us directly and talk with us. We're more than happy to help. Again, we don't want money to be the main reason students don't choose Austin College. So if you reach out and express that concern, we are able to help you either find resources or we take it directly back to financial aid and say, hey, you know, my friend Julia, they need some help. What else can we do? Can we reevaluate? What else can we do? So that is everything about Austin College. Uh, thank you guys so, so much for joining me. It was lovely to chat with you. Uh, so if you need anything after today, again, please feel free to reach out. My email is hdrake, H-D-R-A-K-E, at austincollege.edu. And my number is 903-813-2332 if you would rather talk over the phone. Either way works. Again, I'm more than happy to help answer any kind of the questions you guys have about, you know, your intended major, the application process, a specific club on campus. Uh, but thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all learned quite a bit and I hope to talk to you again soon.